Now built into this large solar cell, you will see diodes that ensure that the current is flowing this direction out of the solar cell. So current flows out of the solar cell and into the load, never the other way around. Because if current were to flow this way into the solar cell, it would imply that the load is powering the solar cell. And that's not what we want. The load is typically going to be a battery. So we want this solar cell to power the battery. In other words, charge it up. So we want to ensure that current flows this way through the unit. And that's what those diodes are for. So they're built into the unit so we don't have to put them in ourselves. Okay, in order to connect this solar cell to my battery, I'm going to connect one alligator clip to the positive and another alligator clip to the negative. Now, these two alligator clips represent the voltage and current that's going to be coming out of the solar cell. So again, um, on a sunny day, this is going to be about 15 volts and about 2 amps, according to Kyocera. Um, and Kyocera is the manufacturer of this solar cell. Now, one option now is just to connect the solar cell directly to the rechargeable battery like this. And if you look at this circuit and analyze it a little bit, you'll realize it's identical to the circuit before where it's just um, solar cells, a rechargeable battery, in this case too, and a diode. The problem with this system is we may um, overcharge the battery. So we don't want to overcharge the battery. So to protect the battery from overcharging, we use a piece of equipment called a charge regulator. So what the, the charge regulator does is it has two functions. It prevents the battery from being overcharged by the solar cell and it protects the battery from being deeply discharged by loads. So we don't want to um, dangerously discharge the battery and we don't want to try to overcharge it either. Okay, now the solar cell and battery are connected together uh, via the regulator. So the last step is to provide a power inverter which is going to convert the DC voltage coming out of the battery um, to 120 volts, um, 60 hertz AC. So up to this point, um, we've been talking about DC voltages. Solar cells only produce DC voltages and currents. In order to convert those voltages to the AC voltage that we use in our home, 120 volts AC, with a frequency of 60 hertz, we need something to invert the voltage. So what we're going to use is a unit. Um, this is just called a power inverter, but it's, it's an inverter. And this unit is going to allow us to plug in any appliance that um, would normally plug into an outlet at home. And so I'm going to connect the other end of this unit to the charge regulator. So this um, end is like a cigarette lighter adapter that you might have used in your car. So this is ground and this is the 12 volts. And so I'm going to connect these two alligator clips into the load um, connectors on the charge regulator. Okay, everything is now connected. We're using the charge regulator to connect the solar cell and the battery and the power inverter all together. So this system 
um, might be appropriate for powering a laptop um, and you know any other small appliance that you might want to power. So if you live off the grid and you want to use a laptop, this might be the way to go. If you're trying to power lights, um, make sure you use um, very efficient lighting systems like compact, compact fluorescent bulbs um, so that you're not drawing too much power from your battery because uh, it only has um, four amp hours of capacity. So it's been um, a little bit of time since I connected the solar cell to the battery. So the battery has been charging for some time. So I'm going to now measure the voltage just to see if it's changed. So you might remember that it was seven volts when I put it up here. And so now it's at 11 volts. Let's take a look at the indicator lights on the charge regulator. You, you can see some LEDs. Um, this light is indicating that the battery is almost fully charged. All right, let's do one more calculation. Suppose I have my 12 volt battery here and it is fully charged with a capacity of four amp hours. And I want to uh, run a light that has a wattage of 26 watts. So here's my, my light source. And if you, if you turn the bulb around somewhere, it'll tell you what the wattage is. So this is a, a 26 watt bulb. And I want to determine um, how long I can run this light using this 12 volt battery. So let's do a calculation and figure out um, what the time is for that. All right, so here's my calculation. I've got a 12 volt battery with a capacity of four amp hours. That means it can uh, store up to 48 watt hours of energy. Now I have a light source that draws 26 watts of power. So to figure out the time that I can run that light for using this battery, I take 26 watts, multiply by the time, that's my unknown, and set that equal to the energy stored in the battery, which is 48 watt hours. So if I solve for time, I get 48 watt hours divided by 26 watts. So that's 1.8 hours or one hour and 48 minutes. So using this battery and using a solar cell to charge it, I can read at night using my compact fluorescent light bulb for approximately one hour and 48 minutes. Suppose you wanted to run your laptop instead of the compact fluorescent light bulb. How much time would you have on your computer using the battery and the power inverter? Well, to figure that out, just like we did with this component, um, you've got to figure out what the power demand is of this computer. Um, let's go ahead and just estimate it to be somewhere between 10 and 50 watts. So just to make the math easy, if it was 48 watts and we've got 48 watt hours stored in our battery, then we could run this computer for about one hour.